All right, so we're going to continue with our vector. We're going to finish up our vector module, our vector unit. So we go to unit 9, vector design. We're going to go all the way to the end where we're posting our logos. Remind ourselves we're using Illustrator in this class, but you can also use vector.com as a, a freeware version online. It's a little different than Illustrator, but it gives you the same capabilities. We posted our refined sketch. Remember, this is from proving ground number two. If you're still missing anything from proving ground number two, you'll see it in your grades and your comments, and you can still make that up. But once you have your sketch approach, you post that into assignment four. And last class, we finished off the black vector. So we're going to be learning how to add color now, because there are three components for assignment four, your refined sketch, your black shape vector, and your color version of the vector. The way we add color is a professional way in which we use the black shape vector and then we do layer styles to it to add color variations. And that's because logos and logo types are always designed as a solid black option. And then we'll have color variations. You can have kind of infinite color variations as long as the shape is the same. It's really the shape and its arrangement that is the identity of a logo. So I'm going to take this, this black cat design, this devil cat design, and I'm going to find it in my files. And I'm not going to find it as a vector file. Instead, I'm going to open up that PSD file where I brought it in as a smart object. So it can be helpful at this point to remind you how I did that. So I'm going to, to build it from scratch here. I'm not going to rebuild the vector, but show you how you can make it into a file within Photoshop to make print ready. So the first thing I needed was I needed to open up my assignment in Illustrator. And then Illustrator has several features, right? The ones we want to pay attention to are in the layers. I had my sketch at the base of this and now I'm going to turn that sketch layer off and I used a variety of tools mostly the pen tool to create all my individual vectors if I use the small selection tool the the white arrow I can see all of those vector shapes really clearly and then I'm going to show you if there's anything that bugs you about it of course professional logo design you would sweat the small stuff in a class when we're just getting uh, getting a uh, what's the word <laughs> introduced to this stuff you don't need to to worry if there's little imperfections like in this curve but I plotted this with the the pen tool I have individual curves you know I can see each curve I can play with them but then there's my favorite tool in Illustrator which is underneath the paintbrush it's called the pencil tool and if I double click on this pencil tool, I can set it to be maximum smooth. And this is just for refining. And then it's like magic scissors. As long as I start on the path and end on the path, it will redraw this cutout for me so I can make it perfectly smooth. And it will balance out my curves for me. So I don't need to worry always about balancing one curve into one curve. Sometimes that will require more anchor points, but it just de depends on your design, right? So it's kind of smoothing it out for me as I go. And you don't want to be too obsessive. And I think everything else looks pretty good, pretty clean. So once you're happy with your black shape vector, I always do this step. Use your large selection tool. I can help you with this. Make sure that all the layers you want visible are unlocked. And then you're going to move it onto the gray. Oops. So I want to get everything here. And if you move it onto the gray and you don't see any white shapes, you just see the gray coming through, then you have a true black shape logo. So then you're ready. Then I'm going to move it back onto what's called the artboard. 
And then I'm going to say file save. That saves it as an AI file. And I make sure it has my name and some description in it. So this is Carl Assignment 4, Maddie Cat Vector Logo Illustrator file. That is a working file type. So that means if I ever want to edit it, I go back into the Illustrator file to edit the actual anchor points. Now, to bring it into something I can make print ready, I want to go to File, Save As, to my computer, and instead of an AI file, we're going to save it as an EPS file. Now, why do we need it as an EPS? Because that is a way to work with Photoshop, right? And keep it as a vector. So I'm going to actually save that right to the desktop so I know where it is. And because this one is slightly cleaner than my, my older EPS, this one's going to be my, my new one. Then once you have saved it as an AI file, a working file format, an EPS file, which is called a transferable format, it means it works between different programs, then I can close Illustrator. I don't need it anymore. And I mark my EPS file blue, and I mark my AI file green. So I'm going to update these. So there's my EPS file. That's what I need. Now, I do not do this, though this would make sense. I do not open my EPS file with Photoshop, even though that's default for, for opening EPS files. Why? Because it will give me this. It will say, um, this is the size of it. This is the resolution. Because it's a vector, it's going to force me to rasterize it if I try to open it directly in Photoshop. And this is what the settings were in my Illustrator for my artboard. But remember, vector files have no scale. So if I don't rasterize it, it will always stay infinitely scalable. So I'm going to say cancel. Instead, what you want to do is you want to open up Photoshop and then say new file. And then that new file for all of your projects that you're going to print, including this logo, you're going to put in 8 by 10 inches. So my logo, I think, looks better on a portrait format, taller than it is wide. So I'm going to do 8 for the width, 10 inches for the, the height. Make sure it's inches. And that is a portrait orientation. And I'm going to do our standard lab print resolution, which is 350 pixels per inch. We're going to be in RGB color mode. Notice how that is different than what it showed when I tried to open up the EPS. Because Illustrator's default mode is, is a printing mode called CMYK. We'll learn about that later. But it's not as, as clear and doesn't support as many colors as RGB mode. And then I'm going to say create. Okay, now I have a blank white 8 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch raster grid. Then I drag and drop my EPS into it. It will center it. And then I hold down Option to squeeze it onto the page in a way I think will look best. And I might move it up a little bit. When you do this, imagine that this black space around your white canvas is your mat. And so you want to give it some space around so that it prints up just like this. We'll print it up on paper, 8.5 by 11. We'll flap that over with the mat, and it will all go together like that. And we'll be ready for our critique next class. All right. So once we have that, we, of course, save that. And we're going to save it with this, the same name, but I'm going to call it my black shape logo. So I'm going to say File, Save As. We're going to save it as a PSD format to the desktop, but I'm going to save it as... Carl assignment four, black shape, I'll say vector, and then some description, right? So now I'll see that on the desktop. I'm going to mark this green. And then how do we submit that to Canvas? And how do we make it print ready? So we have lots of files that come from vectors. So first, to make it print ready, I'm going to say layer, flatten the image. And just like when we animated, you don't want to save it as a PSD after you flattened it because we lose our vector. Then I want to say, File, Save As. And this time I want the format to be 
TIFF, a TIFF format. And then in front of it, I'm going to put the letters capital PR for print ready. I'm going to save that to the desktop as a flattened TIFF file. When I hit save, it's going to give me an extra screen. And that's going to ask if I want any image compression with my TIFF. And the answer is always yes. You always want LZW compression because it's the only type of compression format that doesn't lose any quality. So it's what's called a lossless compression format. So I don't know what LZW stands for, but you can think of the L standing for lossless. So LZW, okay. Now I've got that TIFF file. That's the one that's going to print, and that's the one I marked purple. But I'm still not done because I've got a PSD file. I've got my TIFF file. Now I need my JPEG. And that's to go to Canvas. So I say file, save a copy because this is a loss compression format. And I go to JPEG and I'm going to mark that with orange. That's just my system, right? So all from the same vector file. You're going to save it as an EPS, mark it blue out of Illustrator. You're going to open a new file in Photoshop that is 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Drag your EPS into it so it stays as a vector. So I'm going to open up that PSD, which is green because this is our working file. Then you're going to flatten it, save it as a TIFF with PR in front of it. That's your print ready file. And then you're going to save it as a JPEG. That is the file that goes online. That is your one for Canvas. So I can now put in my JPEG. And it's slightly better than my JPEG was before because I cleaned up that curve in the tail. But other than that, it's just as clean. Oh, the coloring. And now we're going to do the coloring. So the important thing is we have this EPS file. If I open it with preview, oh, I think I saw last time it's not able to open in preview anymore, which is weird. But it will show up almost like a PNG. Yeah. The new operating system of Mac doesn't support EPS in preview, which is very odd, but good to know. All right, so now I've put in my black shape vector. What do I still need? I still need my color version. So your color version can only start once you are happy with your black and white or your black shape. Now I go to my PSD file and I open that up. Remember, this PSD file just has a white background and then floating on top of it is a smart object of your black cutout, of your vector, which is infinitely scalable. All we're going to do to color it is make a duplicate of that smart object and then we're going to double click it the layer to get to layer styles and now we're going to start adding color so it's a black cat I might need some inspiration these are just variations remember it's the shape that matters most but if I look up black cat logo I see a lot of black shapes we get the, the black cat fireworks. So we have some colors like orange and red with the black. Here's some red. I love the old fireworks with like the, the basic printing colors. So maybe I can play with some of those colors. Like the classic blue, yellow, and red. So I might even save that. We're going to learn a lot more about coloring in the next few projects. Okay, now... I have some inspiration. I could always look for color black cat logos as well. I get an idea of what kind of colors might work, or I can just wing it, right? But there's a lot of Halloween-y kind of colors. I can try devil cat instead. So I could make it a red cat. All right, so how would I do that? I'm just going to double click on the vector layer, keep it a vector, and then the easiest one is color overlay. And I can just pick a color, like red. And then basically, we're going to play with all these other variations and see if any of them are what you want 
for your assignment. And that's how we're going to add color.